Okay, what is going on my god team? Welcome back to the channel. We're going to go ahead and take a look at Bitcoin today. We're going to be kind of answering two questions. Is the bottom in? Was that a retest? And what prices do we need to push above for us to flip bullish? And can we potentially go lower? Let's go ahead and dive right into it. Before we get into it, of course, click the link down below to get access to our Telegram channel where we post a bunch of variety of updates, analysis, and basically everything you need in here, all our links to our YouTube and much, much more. If you're interested in joining our VIP channel, you get access to all of our trade signals, updates, and exclusive analysis, as well as our group chat where we post our scalp trades and I share my own personal trades that we're taking massive profits every single month in there. Let's go ahead and dive into the video. So we'll talk about a few things. I think it's a lot to talk about, but we haven't done a video yesterday. So there's a lot, there's really a lot to go But First and foremost, um, kind of bridging from the other video, which was posted two days ago, we did see a breakdown of this symmetrical triangle or this bearish pennant formation. And we know it was a bearish pennant because we did actually break into it from the top side, meaning we do expect that price to continue downwards through the pennant after the sideways consolidation. Okay. So that's kind of what a bearish pennant is. Now, it did reach our target of 19,000. If you watched our previous video, we said that we do expect the price to drop below and reach $19,000. And we can go ahead and we can show you if you were in the Telegram channel, you would see we had this post over here. Hopefully you can see it from our last video, 19,000. Now we actually went a little bit lower than 19,000, which was a bit unexpected. But I think the reason we went under $19,000 was purely because of the volume of selling pressure and the fear really pushed us deep into support. So sometimes there's a lot of fear in the market. Sometimes there's a lot of selling going on. Supports don't really hold their levels quite well. We generally get these massive wicks or drawdowns underneath supports um, before we come back and reclaim them. And same thing, diagonals, horizontals, they don't really get respected. So it's quite hard to trade in these high volatile environments, particularly if you're trading off uh, market structures and zones, because these zones and structures become increasingly unreliable when there's massive amounts of volatility. So if you're a technical trader uh, and you're trading off technical analysis, just be aware when there's massive amounts of volatility, um, there can be a little bit, bit of deviation in the trends, which can be unexpected, a lot of fake outs and all that kind of interesting and annoying stuff. Let's go ahead and talk about that because you know, obviously this is quite an interesting move. We came all the way down, we found the new base level of support. There's new base level of support around uh, 18,600 to 18,650. And this isn't a random level, but it is in a random spot because the zone is in fact a very strong zone. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out and show you where this zone is. We go to the daily chart, we'll zoom out and you can see exactly where the zone is. This zone here, this gray box, comes all the way back to two areas. The 2017 all-time high, as well as the period of contention um, and confluence that we had around November to mid-December 2020. So we came back and retested its level. Again, this level has been retested a couple times. We had that drop down all the way to the bottom of the level over here, which is at 17,600, 18,000 drop down as well, which we call the bottom. Uh, retest, multiple retests at the top of the range um, previous to this in July, early July. And now finally a drop back down about 30, 40% through that range to around 18,600 and a push back up. So 19,000 is still acting as a horizontal support. We have this support zone extending all the way down to about 17,600, which is that local low, that absolute bottom, which was created on the 18th of June, okay? So we do have a fair bit of support underneath us. So let's talk about um, this chart now. We'll come back to a small time frame in a second and talk about what we think is gonna happen. But let's talk about the macro. So we've talked a bit about this already. You can see this zone again, indicated by these two green lines that we've been talking about. Um, but the monthly chart is really something I want to discuss because the monthly candle now, the monthly candle now is currently sitting underneath the 2017 all time high, which is very, very bad to see. Not a very good sign, uh, very bearish indeed. Obviously, we have these double candles, this double bottom area over here, retesting that low, which is good to see. Uh, losing this level would, in fact, obviously confirm a continued drawdown to about 12,000 to $13,000, okay? So the support that we need to hold on the monthly is of course the 2017 all-time high. We'd like to we would like to close above that. But worst case scenario would be the absolute bottom over here, this red line we do need to stay above. If we lose that level, that is the trigger to $13,000, okay? Keep that in mind. Lose that level, we trigger to $13,000. Simple as that, okay? 
Now there's a chance we double bottom there. There's a chance we don't even retest it. But if we lose that level, that will be the trigger. Going back to the daily chart, we can see it in a little bit more um, light over here. We can see we're getting quite close, but we're not quite there yet. Massive support over here, massive horizontal level here. This is definitely a target zone where we could come down and retest and push upwards. Okay, keep that in mind. So let's take a look at our larger time frame again, and then we'll come back and talk about what's happening on the very small time frame. So we are still in a macro bear market. The macro bear market is live and well. Um, as you can see, we've been in this ever since October, November, pushing down rejection in March. Um, numerous retests at the bottom is trend line January and June, and we're pushing into the middle of this trend line again. So we're seeing a few things. First and foremost, we already know that this is a macro descending channel. Therefore, at some point, this will have to reverse and flip upwards. There's no doubt about it. At some point, this trend will flip and go bullish. We'll get an uptrend. Just as if we have a rising channel, a ceiling channel, at some point, we end up breaking that uptrending support and heading down. The same thing happens when we have this ascending channel. So we're waiting for that descending channel to break, and that will be the trigger that the bear market has officially ended, okay? When the trigger of that break, the bear market is over. Just because the bear market is over doesn't mean we have don't have resistance, however. Keep that in mind. Say, hypothetically, we do something like this. This is just hypothetical, and we break, okay? The bear market is over, but we are not out of the waters. We're not in a bull market because we still have major resistance above us. The uh, 30,000 to 28,000 resistance. We have the 37,500 to 40,500 resistance, which is a major resistance, and the 48K trigger. The 48K trigger we'll talk about first. If we break over $48,000, there is a very, very high chance we go to a new all-time high, meaning we clear 69,000, okay? We break over 48K, there's an incredibly high chance we clear that previous high and we go up to 48,000. Now, this is incredibly speculative, but what we could potentially see here is some sort of huge rounding bottom, all right? A huge rounding bottom is definitely uh, possible. We, are, we have actually formed half of a rounding bottom already quite well, okay? So something to keep in mind, um, that could be another thing we're looking for in the future, but I wouldn't be betting on that at all. I just thought I'd mention it, but it's purely speculation at the moment. We're not really going to be taking that into account, just a possibility. Uh, but we are waiting for that break above here. Breaking that would be the downtrend break. Pushing through these levels will be triggers for next levels, meaning if we do break through this level, that would be the trigger up to this level. If we do break through this level, that would be the trigger up to this level. But these are all key rejection points where we could push up to and reject from and continue downwards from. So let's talk about the short term. Uh, we'll go to this chart again and go to the hourly. And on the short term, guys, we can see we're pushed back over $19,000, which is really good to see. And $19,000 is now acting as that major horizontal support level um, for the price, as well as that 18650 level uh, represented by these green lines over here. We are forming a bull flag formation. Uh, bull flag formation is a bullish pattern. We usually have the flag pole, which is our measured move, to the breakout point. This takes us upwards to the next horizontal resistance. And obviously the measure move is taking us through that resistance, but we already know you guys have been following the channel. You would know that measure moves don't tell us where they're gonna end. They're only gonna tell us what potentially they can reach. We generally move through a measure move until we meet a major horizontal resistance. And we have our major horizontal resistance here. And therefore we have to assume the measured move will take us up to this horizontal resistance which is by no surprise the same area we retested on three occasions for support in early um early september and late august okay so on the short term guys we do expect a move upwards this will be quite indicative of what's going to happen if we push through here obviously it's a bullish sign we continue upwards if we lose this level this is an area i'd be looking to take shorts from we could potentially come down to retest this neckline here and continue or potentially 19,000. If we lose 19,000 again, guys, expect to see something like this where we just cascade all the way back down here and potentially even continue that trend to retest the lower depths of this support zone. I'm gonna leave it there, guys. That's all we wanna talk about today. Of course, we have one more video coming today. We're gonna to quickly talk about that. Uh, I posted this one in the channel over here. Uh, we're gonna be talking about leverage trading. I'm gonna do a video later on today to teach you guys what leverage trading is and how you can go ahead about using leverage trading because so i've got so many questions pretty much every single uh second day people ask me you know well how do i leverage trade how do i short how do i long so i figured i'm gonna do a video on that and obviously we use bitget as our primary 
uh, trading exchange, obviously, they've just released a whole bunch of new stuff like 0% fees on spot. They have very, very low uh, future speed, uh, fees. Uh, they have mechanisms in place to prevent scam wicks um, and really is one of the best exchanges out there for leverage trading and futures. Uh, so we'll talk about all of that today. And if you want to obviously front run me a little bit and get in there before we talk about it uh, and practice around a bit before we teach you guys, or just have something ready to go while we're teaching you, go ahead and sign up to BitGet over here. Click the link, you get discounts on your fees and you get access to the reward center if you click the link over here. Um, and up to $4,163 in reward bonuses by clicking a link. Um, and we'll talk about how we can use that and how you can future trade later on in another video today. So stick around for that one, guys, and I'll catch you later. Cheers. Okay, guys, we're going to be taking a quick look at BitGet. And now BitGet is where I personally trade. I highly recommend signing up to BitGet with the link down below. BitGet is probably the best exchange out there if you are a trader. It has a variety of features. And the best things about BitGet are a few things. Number one, it's non-KYC. Well, KYC is completely optional on BitGet. Now, there's a whole variety of exchanges out there nowadays that have gone completely centralized, sharing your personal trading information and information of decentralized uh, governments and different governing bodies. BitGet allows that option to be left to the individual, to the user of the exchange. You can decide to non-KYC. You can decide to KYC. It's completely your choice. Another really beneficial thing about BitGet and the biggest reasons why I, I'm sitting here actually recommending BitGet to all my, all my followers is that it has 0.02% trading fees. All right? This is significantly lower than any other cryptocurrency trading exchange out there. FTX, Binance, can name a bunch more, KuCoin. It is significantly lower, by 500% lower than the lowest exchange out there, Binance. Um, another big thing, guys, is there's no global restrictions on who can use BitGet. Anyone from anywhere can sign up to BitGet and get access to the entire exchange of all the tools, whether it be futures or spot. No matter which country you're in, you can use futures and spot. If you're in America, for say, and you want to get access to more spot trading pairs, such as Binance Global, and you can't sign up, well, guess what? They've got 250 different spot trading pairs here on BitGet to get access to, and you can get access to all of these. If you're in Australia and you want to access the futures market and you can't trade futures, you can do it here on BitGet. You can get access to the future market and start trading with leverage. And finally, guys, if you do want to sign up to BitGet, go ahead, click that link down below to sign up to BitGet and you'll get access to the reward center over here, which enables up to $4,000 in rewards by completing five tasks. All right, guys, we'll get back to the video. Thanks for listening to that. Okay, guys, I want to take a quick moment to introduce the Become a Trader course at the end of this video. This course was designed by myself and Wolves of Crypto. We put together a whole variety of knowledge to create the most cohesive, understandable, and beneficial trading course there is on the market. If you're interested in learning how to become a trader, if you're interested in learning how to use technical analysis, if you're interested in learning how to apply market analysis to different cryptocurrencies, this is a course for you. We teach you everything from the fundamentals, the basics about what cryptocurrency is, how to trade cryptocurrency, mastering the craft of cryptocurrency, diving into a whole range of technical indicators, market structures, and teaching you how to utilize these when finding trades and applying risk management strategies to become more profitable over time. We even dive into market psychology, human psychology, and provide a variety of different videos and educational content, including courses and quizzes to assist your learning along the way. If this is something you're interested in, guys, go ahead and contact us down below at the Crypto Academy courses at gmail.com. We'll send you an email back with all the course information, the structure, the payment details, and everything else you need to know. That being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today, and we'll catch you in the next one.